Hi, this is Fiona from Design Spec. Today we're going to talk about um, reports, how to generate them and the different types, as well as how you can filter through some of the reports. And we'll also talk a little bit about revision dates that you can assign to projects. So let's go into the Park Place Hotel, and you'll see we'll come to the Overview tab. Now this is the tab that has the issue and revision dates. So currently we have the auto assign um, dates enabled. And that means that if we were to pick a date, and say we pick today, um, that this date will now be assigned as a, as a revision date to all the specs in the project. If we need to be more specific about which specs get this date, we can disable this feature. And now we can um, either create this and hit save and just make this an option. We can assign this date manually to just a handful of specs, or we can assign this date to all the FF&E in the project, or to all the architectural items, or we could even assign this date to a specific room type or area within a project. So for now, let's assign this date to all the FF&E. That means that um, if you choose to turn on the revision tracker, when we create the report, any revisions that have happened to specs between the last two dates will be highlighted in red. So if you go to the specs tab, you can see this is all the specs we have active in the project at the moment. So I'm going to show you how you can make a report that will either generate with all of these specs or with just like a filtered handful of them based on either changes that have been made or the area in which they're located. So go to the reports tab you can see there's a number of report options um, that come with the software. So we definitely recommend that you click around and try out all of these reports and all of the settings before you start printing your final ones. Once you do generate a report, um, it will download to your desktop, but it, Design Spec will save um, copies on the cloud of the most recently published reports, and you can download them directly from here. So let's start with a full page spec. You can see if I toggle over this, um, a preset option shows up. Now I'll show you what this means, but basically if you create a report with a number of specific settings, um, you can save those settings under the preset so you don't have to go back and keep clicking those settings every time. So for now, let's generate the full report and see what it looks like if we need to show all the specs in the project. Now, you don't need to generate the full report every time. There's a number of filters and settings over here, so you can pick and choose which specs you'd like to generate. Um, so click on settings. You can see this is the full page spec. Um, off the bat, you can change the title based on this field here. You can also choose to show the manufacturer or not, or show the vendor or not, show the price for all the spec items. Here's where you can turn on or off the highlighted revision fields. So if you want the specs that you've changed to show up in red, you can click these boxes. Um, if you want only the latest revisions to show up in red, highlight this. If you'd like to remove the tear sheets that you've included, um, deselect this button. So you can see there's a number of different options here. But let's click through and just show you what these specs look like. You have a table of contents, and then you get into the full page specs. So you can toggle around um, using all of these links over here. Here is an option for EQ01, um, this is the full page spec. Now this layout comes by default with design spec, but you can go in and customize the fonts. So you can make the changes to the color and the size and the fonts themselves for all the text. Um, there's also an option to create a brand new layout for the full page spec entirely from scratch. So I'll talk about that in another video. So you can see after this, we have a tear sheet included. You can choose not to include that by highlighting or deselecting include documents. You can jump to another spec. 
Here's an example of a speck that has been marked as removed, so you can see the red strike through. Now let's look at the filters over here. If you'd like to filter down which specs are included with the report, you can do that here. So you can choose to highlight maybe only the owner furnished items or only the contractor furnished. You can show just the architectural finishes. You can also um, choose a revision date that you'd like to show just the latest specs that have been changed. Let's, let's pick um, a selection by area. So we'll show all the guest rooms and we'll show all the owner furnished items within that those guest rooms. Make sure you hit apply so the report has a chance to regenerate. Now you can see there's fewer specs included with this particular report. And it's going to show only the items in the guest room that are owner furnished. Now when you're ready to download, you can highlight the download button. Most people use PDF, but you can also export as a number of other different file types. So let's go back and now take a look at the spec index. This is a much more condensed version of the full page spec. And again, now the layout for this is provided by default by design spec, but you can also go in and um, create your own entirely brand new layout from scratch, which I'll talk about another time. So you can change um, the text again. You can change the font. You can see I've made it blue here. <clears throat> and here you have just kind of an overview of all the specs in the project. Now, in the same way, you have settings that you can change around. So we could choose to maybe um, change the title and show the price as well as the budget totals. We can group by area. So that means that all the specs that are grouped together in a certain area will be clustered together. And then we can also pick from some of these other filters down here. Um, <clears throat> for example, if you want to highlight just a few vendors or maybe just one type of um, spec type here. But let's just apply the filters for now and see what it looks like when we group by area. Now when you've made a number of changes and, and picked a number of settings over here on the right, if you find that you're using those same settings over and over again, then you'll want to do a save preset and label it. So for example, if you were saving um, only the FF&E that is purchased by the owner, you can highlight those specific filters over here, save preset, and then label it owner seating. So the first specs that show up when we group by area are the ones that have not been assigned to an area. And then once you get past those, you'll see here are the specs that are assigned to the bar. We've also included the price and the totals in this filter option, so those show up here at the bottom. Here's a spec that's been marked as removed. So there's a number of different ways that you can approach how this report will come out. Um, you can also pick very specific specs. So if you want to show maybe only the two banquettes, you can do that and create just a really quick report maybe of specs that have changed today. Now you can see just the two show up here. And again, if you want to save this preset, you may want to call this um, BankX. And then when you click on that preset, which is located here when you hover, you can do that and it will automatically filter for you. Now let's look at the spec schedule. Now this report is sort of in between the full page spec and this, the index in terms of format and how much information is included. And the same settings and filters apply over here on the right. So this is what the schedule looks like. You can also jump around and toggle through. And you can make all the same changes over here. When you're ready to download, go to PDF. 
we have the spec area matrix. So this is going to show you the quantities of all the items you've indicated in the project. So if you've said the number of chairs per area, for example, or the number of yards of fabric, it's going to show up here. So we have along the top the spec code. On the left is the area or room type. The quantities are within the matrix, and the totals are at the bottom. You can change the settings. You could change um, the page orientation. And you can also um, sort the areas by name instead of code and filter by all the same um, options as the earlier ones. This mark is removed, that's why it's red. We have a room matrix. This is handy for hotel projects. So it's going to list all the floors that are in the project along the top here and then all the room types um, and it lists the quantity of room types per floor, the totals, and the percentages of each room type for the whole project. You can see these are a couple custom reports that I made from scratch. So in another tutorial, I'll review how you can make your own layouts that fit with your firm standards. We also have an internal budget. So if you or the client would like to know um, approximately what the project is going to cost in terms of FFE finishes, this report will let you know as long as you have assigned prices and quantities to your specs. Now this is also useful if you do purchasing for um, your firm. This will tell you the internal budget. So if you've marked up some of your items, it will tell you the profit made on those. We also have some um, options for purchasing, so I'll review that in another video. Um, the purchase orders as well as proposals, which are the marked up quotes that go out to clients. So please um, feel free to click through and do your own testing for all the different types of reports we have. And always be very open to asking us questions because we love to help you out and get them answered for you. Okay, thanks for joining. Talk to you next time.